Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Clyde and Goldman escape as suckers, Ava goes rogue Days of Our Lives reveals that Steve Johnson and John Black checked in with Ava Vitali at the airport, where they verified they were ready for the coming phase of their plan. At Statesville, a couple of guards caused a chemical response by designedly discovering barrels of bleach and ammonia. There were flashing lights and admonitions, so Clyde Weston smiled in his cell and awaited escape help. Steve and John appeared soon after wearing defensive suits, so they gave one to Clyde and got him to the airport. That's where Ava pulled a gun along with the two guards working for her. Ava blazoned that they'd be doing effects her way and had those guards lead Steve and John off-site. Once Ava was alone with Clyde, he said he appreciated her help stopping John and Steve from double-crossing him. That said, Clyde didn't really trust Ava either, so he said he'd give Trip Johnson's, Lucas Adams, position once he was on the airplane. And in the air. That didn't work for Ava, who wanted to know Trip's position right now. Ava hovered to shoot Clyde in the groin, but Officer Goldman ambuscaded Ava and gained control of the situation. Once Goldman held Ava at gunpoint next, she said she liked Clyde's man corridor just the way they were. Goldman made sure Ava was tied up and made out with Clyde as it came clear they were a couple. Since Clyde assumed that the airman of the airplane was working for Ava, he planned to drive out of Salem with Goldman rather. Goldman told Ava not to bother looking for Trip since she formerly made sure he was a goner, so Ava was devastated and furious. In the domain on Friday's day's occasion, Steve and John managed to give their guards the slip, so they ran down. In the tank, Wendy Shin bothered to trip about running out of air, but he admitted carbon monoxide was the bigger concern. Tripp suggested taking slow, shallow breaths and had a deep discussion with Wendy, who wanted to talk about God, the afterlife and their parents' brewing grief. Wendy confessed that she had hoped to get wedded and have kitties eventually, but she felt she'd in no way have the chance now. Tripp claimed he'd marry Wendy on the spot, so they changed some sweet promises and kissed. As Wendy and Tripp came drowsy and weak, she asked if he'd marry her for real when they were free. Tripp said he would, but neither one of them sounded veritably apprehensive of what they were saying at that point. At the sanitarium on Friday's DOL show, Paulina Paulina was not doing well at all. Abe Carver refused to leave Paulina's side and cried over not wanting to lose her. Still, Paulina got Abe to promise he'd take care of her girls if she didn't make it, so he indeed promised to watch over Lonnie Grant Chanel de Mera along with their misters and the halves. After Chanel and Lonnie showed their support for Paulina, they opened up about their fears and regrets in the waiting room. Lonnie assured Chanel that if they lost Paulina, they would be there for each other and get through this. Once Paulina came tired again on Friday's day's occasion, Abe said he'd understand if she didn't want to keep fighting. Abe felt that they'd each learn to get on without Paulina since that's what she'd want, but he was easily crushed at the study of that. Paulina ultimately opened her eyes to see that she was girdled by white light and a near angel, so she signaled across the room and got Abe to look at the figure standing there, too. Days of Our Lives spoilers say there are some unanticipated moments ahead for Paulina and Abe, so stick with us for updates on some shocking news at the sanitarium. Is swinging a number of deaths before us, but may have teased the return of, spoiler, over a decade after dying. The stylish laid plans so Clyde is now free and they used John and Steve's planning plus Ava's family coffers to bust him out of captivity. But he apparently has an entire felonious enterprise underneath him, plus a loose bobby. Nut and who knows how numerous captivity guards on his payroll. Why did he need any of their help for this? Nothing but Black Patch could break him out? Yeah, I do ain't by that. It's too simulated in the same way as I've been complaining about Ava and Stefan not being suitable to deal with Clyde. Why not? Because plot. I do ain't know who had the worst idea, though John and Steve allowing they could hold Clyde indefinitely until he coughed up Trip, or Ava turning on them and allowing she could hang to shoot him and he detail? And I suppose the Wendy and Trip stuff was sweet, but I still need further than sweet for them. There's got to be more fire there, external or internal, I do not know, but I need commodity. I guess they kind of gave up, however. Because whatever happened to conserving air rather of talking continuous? 
I suppose when you re at the end of your life, you take what comfort you can get and that includes talking of marriage and spending a life together. Days of our lives clearly pulled out all the stops to make us suppose they wouldn't make it, but if they do, perhaps they ll come out of it determined to live life to the fullest. Touched by an angel over on the Paulina side of effects for the other big thriller. Lonnie and Chanel were talking about their kitties being too youthful missing to flash back their grandmother was beautiful and heartbreaking. Though that also hits close to home. My own pater. S thing has been to be around long enough for his grandchildren to flash back him. But I've a feeling that's commodity lots of people face, which is why it was so still effective. Lonnie and Chanel huddle together while Abe sits at a sleeping Paulina's sanitarium bedside. As for Paulina herself, that bright light and the figure was ain't just a lighting problem on set. We know from spoilers that an angel is visiting Paulina and Abe, but I do ain't buy that they read there to save her. Bringing someone back from the point of death is one thing, but this angel would have to miraculously heal Paulina's failing heart too. That's a bit important, I know it's days of our lives, but still. Rather, I.V.E. got a proposition. Apes conceded that he still does not flash back up most of Paulina and addresses about her being the love of his life which is true, seeing as how his life only extends to about nine months as far as his memory is concerned. What if the angel is there for him, not Paulina? She's there to give him his memory back before he loses his woman. Else, what's been the point of holding on to this memory loss all this time unless there was a big, beautiful, emotional return? Bathed in white light in her sanitarium bed, Paulina gapes ahead wide-eyed. Holding her hand, a surprised Abe turns. A person in a white shirt, with the sleeve rolled up their bicep, stands before them. The thing is, Paulina has and inescapably been the love of Abe's life. That, for numerous times, was Lexi. So what if she's the angel, coming down to help her cherished hubby and give him his life and his happy recollections back before losing Paulina? If they got Renee Jones back for this, that would be downright amazing. With that said, I do and suppose Paulina's dying. She needs a heart, but Wendy and Tripp are still in dire woe. Also there's Clyde and Officer Goldman. John and Steve just got free, so I v a feeling they ll pull off a last nanosecond achievement, taking the baddies down. And while I am sure up most of you want to see Clyde get his, if we re being honest, Goldman is the most likely bone. To suck. The dust and give Paulina a heart. What's in a name? We learned whoever it really is. Robert Everett Stein, with his mama s demoiselle name of Lynch. I had some ideas about what that may mean, including the fact that Everett remembers his mama but not his father. And it veritably much plays into him having two personalities. From the living room hall, Everett watches Chad and Stephanie embracing in the Horton house. A altitudinous graduation is propped open behind him. Now that Marlena's started digging around in his mind, I've a feeling we're going to meet the ignominious Bobby Stein soon. Marlena got effects started and we learned that Everett's likely got a whole lot of problems darting around upstairs, but next over is hypnotism. And if there's anything we as devoted cleaner pieces observers know, it's that once you break out the hypnotism, split personalities start rearing their heads real presto. Or Stephanie and Chad getting close again could bring Bobby out. Everett clearly sounded a bit baffled to see them all friendly and close again. I still want him to have commodity to do with the medicines. Perhaps formerly Clyde's out of the way, the medicine problem will keep going and everyone will realize there was further going on than they realized. But it may just be a pipe dream at this point. Out of control sitting close on the Demera settee, EJ holds the reverse of Nicole's head as they hypercritically face each other. The Holly slash Nicole slash EJ stuff is just driving me crazy at this point. It goes commodity like this.